and Jim Gardner covering the Pope, John Paul, mm -hmm. who died. And we spent two weeks there because no, they did pick a Pope for about two weeks. Mm -hmm. We had whole two weeks in Rome and didn't sleep because what happened was we ended up going there, shooting on the plane, getting off. Now I'm working about 24 hours, literally. And I finally put my head down on the pillow and I get a knock on the door from Jim Gardner. Oh, can you see this called Her live studio? We can edit our film and process our film, edit it, and send it out. And I just yelled to him, I just laid down. And he said, get your ass up, let's go. 18 hour days with maybe about three hour sleep in Rome through all that because we could, again, not by satellite, but send it through cable line across the ocean back to the ABC. Well, let me suggest this has been a wonderful moment. Uh, just remembering Bobby and uh, all those experiences. Oh, of course, what am I saying? I forgot. Oh, I'm sorry, we have one more. Okay. Uh, this, uh, and I have not met uh, John Harlan, but he was a roommate of Bobby's before all this happened. John, wherever you are. I'll be brief. Uh, Father and I met in 1971. I was living in Ballon Park. I had lost my roommate to getting married, and I needed another roommate. So, like any Jewish boy at the time, I took an ad out in the Jewish exponent. The first person to arrive was Bob Kravitz. It was a little strange because the Jewish exponent had not come out yet. <laughs> and so I was a little concerned as to how he got there. But being that I worked at the time for uh, the Banks family, which uh, some of you might have known if I worked at WHAT and WWDB, uh, if you think WPVI did not pay well, then you should have worked for the Banks family. <laughs> so I needed, I needed someone to pay the other half the rent. So he looked like a serial killer and <laughs> told me work that I actually lose. I said, how bad can it be? So I said, okay, we'll take him on. So we come in, and uh, if you remember in those days, uh, we didn't have cell phones, so we had a phone. So the phone, we had one phone, I had one phone in the apartment. Bob was putting a new phone, and it was in the kitchen. Bob, as you all know, wanted to be the first cameraman on any scene. So he had a standing call to whoever was on the call that whatever happened in the middle of the night, we we're going to call Spot. Which I said, okay, that's fine. But Mom didn't tell me that he slept on a lock. So I had to get up and answer the phone for Bob to get him to the fire. So I said, Bob, I didn't sign on for this. We were buying a phone for your room and we're going to turn it up loud so that you can do it. Second little story is, when's the first time he saw Susan? We lived on Cranston Road, and I guess Susan must have lived close to there, because one day, Bob's up, he's having bracket breakfast, he looks outside, and he says, Jesus, this is a beautiful woman standing outside. He said, I'd really like to get to know her. And I looked out, and I said, Bobby, when you're right, she's a beautiful woman. She's also way out of her class. <laughs> but, as fate has it, that same day, Bob is filming at the University of Pennsylvania Hospital, and who does he run into? That's Susan. And he comes back and he tells me, I met the girl at the bus station. I said, how did you do that? And he explained it. Then, within a, within a year, they got married. At the time, I was... young woman named Joanne Fury, who was the uh, first vice president of the Chaos and Rice, first female vice president of advertising. Uh, and I had now, I was now going through my third grooming, and she really wasn't that happy about the fact that I had not made the decision as to what I should do. So to some extent, Bob and Susan's marriage got me married, and since we've been married for 47 years, I guess Bob did me a great favor. But, uh, Bob, you know, for the year or so we lived together until we got married, Bob was the best of the best. I don't remember him fix 
fixing too much, or other people say he did fix it. They're fixing an art department. But he was a nicest guy. We got along terrific. He was a, he was a great roommate. And if he stayed around for a while, I mean, I got married to you later. But Bob, it was a pleasure living with you. I don't think, I don't know if you lived with anybody else besides me and Susan. I'm sure Susan was better. But uh, all I can say is he was the best of the best, and may he rest in peace. Thank you. Now, I understand there are some people here who would like to say something. And have thoughts on body? I mean, what else? By the way, Bob, Mike is going there. Um, Bob has done the pictures on all broadcast pioneers membership directory. And Bob is, his photo will be on the next issue, the 2020. I just saw the proof last night. And all I can say is, wow. Okay, Mike. Hello? 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 